Um, I don't have anything planned for the episode. This is like my worst nightmare. Where's Ghost Avengers? Where's Ghost Avengers? Hello, my name is Dave, and welcome to the West Coast Avengers. Is that a new theme song? We'll find out soon. Welcome back to the West Coast Avengers. My name is Dave. If you don't know me yet, let me introduce myself. I am a comic book collector, a comic book reader, and a comic book seller. Let's talk about comics because that's what this program is about. But you might learn a thing or two. So come on, get comfortable. Every Wednesday, I do a live sale right here on YouTube. West Coast Wednesday. That's the name of the show. Every Sunday, I drop this episode, and every Sunday night, I do a live show called Sunday Sit Down, where I bring over a guest, or we just talk about comics, we flip through some books. I take my inspiration from Cartoonist Kayfabe on Sunday Sit Down, so check out that show if you've never seen it. I was on Facebook this morning. I found somebody post a collection of weird stuff, and what stood out to me is one of the pictures had the logo for the Tim Vigil comic, Faust, drawn on it perfectly and i said hmm this is the type of collection i might want to look at i have a knack for the independent stuff the black and white stuff the weird fringe stuff art portfolios and all that stuff so when i see a collection that has those types of books and memorabilia i like to look at it this collection just happened to be about 20 minutes from my house i live in a comic book utopia what can i say i went there it was a roommate that had passed away a few years ago he'd collected a lot of stuff and you know we left it all behind and there wasn't much family to give it to so they held on to it and they decided to finally sell it and i started digging through i spent about three hours there chatting talking about all different aspects of life and just just having a great conversation and i love that i love talking to people i'm talking to people right now i don't even know them you're all just watching smash the like button by the way so i looked through everything and i told them i said what I do, I buy collections, I sell what I don't really want, I try to break even, and then I keep what I want, and I sell the rest, which is exactly what I do. That is the best business model for me. There was a lot of weird stuff in there. This guy collected Tim Vigil and Joe Vigil, Grips, Faust, all that stuff. I found treasures upon treasures. I did not look a, th a single thing up, and after I was done piling up the stuff I wanted, I started giving them advice on how to sell everything, and I told them like we would, I'd pick up something. I bet, you know, I'm like, this is probably worth putting on eBay. And sure enough, it'd be an out of print hardcover that was worth a hundred bucks. So I was trying to give them good advice on how to sell the, the rest of this stuff. And I made them an offer for 300 bucks for everything you see on this table. And, and they were more than happy to take it. Let me just dive right in and go through. I was hoping to find more, but you know, when you see Todd, you buy Todd and I am still putting together a spawn run. So I picked up a bunch of issues of spawn that fall into the, high 100s those 188 189 190 191 uh, i believe it's 195 and oh and a friday the 13th number one i don't know much about friday the 13th comics but i got to imagine it's got some value it's jason Voorhees, dave stevens planet comics i did not realize how valuable this was until i just got home and i literally just got home like an hour ago so i was kind of looking at some of the prices on some of this stuff this is actually pretty pricey right now. Uh, I did find a Rocketeer trade paperback, Dave Stevens. Uh, I also found this Jungle Comics number one by Dave Stevens. I was not really aware of Dave Stevens until the last couple years. His cult status kind of elevated to more of a mainstream status now. And people are searching for his artwork and searching for his books because everybody realizes how amazing his art is. And he passed away, I don't know how long ago, but... He's somebody that I, I have my eyes open for whenever I'm looking through stuff like this. Look at this thing. The Comics Journal number 301. I did not know that the Comics Journal had printed issues that were book size. This was a $30 cover price. And the interviews in here are headlined by an interview with Robert Crumb. So I'm excited to read that. There's also some stuff with Joe Sacco, Al Jaffe, Jim Woodring. So it's definitely something I'm excited to look through. It's huge. I've never read an interview with Robert Crumb. The only thing I've ever seen of him is 
the documentary, which is amazing. Yeah, speaking of Robert Crumb, Zap Comics number eight. Not sure what printing this is. Don't care. Whenever I see a Zap Comics, I'm going to pick it up. This is from Slave Pit Inc. And this is Guar Comics. So Guar, the industrial, comedic, heavy metal, sludgy, fun-filled, splattered you with blood band that started in the 80s, did comics. And they're called When Heroes Roam the Earth. Guar number two and WrestlePhobia number one. So my only experience with this Slave Pit Guar stuff, when I was younger, me and my buddy Seth, we used to go to the Javits Center for what would be New York Comic Con. And we were kids, you know, we were 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever. One year we were there. I went to the bathroom and I was peeing and next to me was the lead singer of Guar in his full costume. And I was just like, oh my God, you're with Guar. And he's like, yeah. And so obviously we we didn't continue too much conversation while we were peeing. After I was washing my hands, he's like, hey, you, you know the band? I was like, yeah, you know, I, I probably started singing Sick of You. Sick, sick. Oh, oh, yo, oh, oh, I'm so, so sick, sick, so sick, sick of, of you. you. Or maybe it was Sexecutioner. But he loved the fact that I was just this little kid singing his songs. So he's like, come over to the table. And they gave us a couple of free zines from Slave Pit. And like they were signed and they were, had like fake blood thumbprint on there. They asked us if we wanted to hand out free stuff. And I was like like of course guar wants me to hand out free literature so we spent like an hour at the table just handing out free zines and stuff like that and it's just one of those things that like i forget that it happened and then when i think of guar i'm automatically rushed back to that moment at the javits center i don't know what this is but i thought it would be fun to take a look through called femzine comic strips and photos i'm gonna open it up right here and see if there's any notable artists Oh, there's a Terry Austin back cover. I'd recognize that Austin signature anywhere. So there's artists in here. Terry Austin, John Beatty, Bill Black, Willie Blyberg, R.C. Harvey, Jeffrey Jones, and Bob McLeod. So some, some decently big names in here for Femzine. He had multiple, and by multiple I mean probably close to 20 copies of the first issue of The Uncensored Mouse and only two copies of the second issue, Uncensored Mouse. The Uncensored Mouse is all of the Disney comic strips from the 30s that contained a lot of racist crap that Disney tried to bury because being the company that they are now and especially being the company that they've grown to be over the years, they don't want this part of their history shown to everybody. Some of it doesn't really register to me as racist because like the, the stereotypes that they were using in the 30s just don't exist anymore. They didn't exist in my lifetime. So some of the stuff I've, I've read through these, they, it flies over my head, but then some of the stuff so blatant that like anybody could recognize that this was not cool. It's How to Draw Superheroes by Rich Buckler. I know the name Rich Buckler. I know a lot of the comics he was involved in. What The one that comes to mind is Deathlock, Astonishing Tales. So I just picked this up. Solson Publications, a little cool book. Emerald City Comic Con started doing these maybe 15 years ago or so. Hardcover books called Monsters and Dames, and they're exclusive to Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle. Each year, it's a different book, different cover. This one is an Adam Hughes one from 2011. Frank Cho doing the cover on the 2009 one. I like this a lot. 2012 Addy Granoff cover, and each one of these are hand numbered out of a limited edition. So this one, for example, is... 178 out of 1150. I'll probably be selling these if anybody's interested. Speaking of Emerald City Comic Con, I picked up, they had a couple copies of this in those boxes. 2012 Emerald City Comic Con program with a Mark Silvestri cover. Can never go wrong with Mark Silvestri. A magazine that I have recently come to know about is Danny Fingeroth's Right Now. And it's all about comic book writing and interviews with comic book writers and articles. Eric Larson cover and an Eric Larson interview. I'm really excited to read this and then I'll probably just give it away for free to somebody else that wants to read it. I picked up this pack. It was Warp Graphics Presents ElfQuest, the magazine. But then in there, Colleen Duran signed Distant Soil magazines. They're all signed and numbered. You get issue one, two, three, and four. I've only seen this once in regular comic form. This is Scott McCloud's Destroy, the loudest comic book in the universe. And it was basically like Scott McCloud making this like, I can do big superhero stereotypical comic book, but it's huge. It's a treasury edition. I have the regular edition, but I'm excited to, to really check this out. 
Justice Machine portfolio. These are just art prints. There's some great names in here, including John Byrne, Sam De La Rosa, George Perez, and Fred Hembeck, and Michael Zeck. I'm a sucker for ash cans, for sketchbooks, for anything small and self-published. Here's Fearless Fury from 1963, the Image Comics kind of like imprint that Alan Moore was writing. And this is the ash can preview signed and numbered by Steve Bissett. And what the 1963 label was, it was like these old comics in its own universe that Alan Moore created that was made to mimic the comics that came from 1963. Very much inspired by Jack Kirby, but I never knew that they did ash can versions of it. And I thought this was really cool. Along with that, you got the Eradicators. That's an ash can. A 1985 Ron Lim book. I believe this might be the first work of Ron Lim in comics. I could be wrong, but check this out. Sam Keith sketchbook from 2004 and Albert Moy, which is his art rep. I've never seen a Sam Keith sketchbook. It is signed and numbered out of 500 right there on the front cover on the inside. And that is a cool Sam Keith autograph. I've never seen him sign like that before. We get to some of the Vigil stuff. Here is a Grips Ashcan preview book from Chris Silver and Tim Vigil. And then we got Joe Vigil doing Original Sin signed right on the front cover. Didn't get to look through this yet, so I'm not exactly sure if it's a preview book or if it's a sketchbook or if it's a graphic novel. These people had like a pile of like original prints and this guy, the roommate, collected a lot of original commissions from Emerald City Comic Con prints. There was even some original pages and portfolios. So I picked up all the portfolios that were uh, Tim Vigil. Whoa, they're so big. Uh, let's give you a little look at this one. This is Faust. None of them are signed and they're not like screen prints or anything, but they used to sell these at conventions and mail away and stuff like that. But you get an idea of uh, some of the artwork that you find in, okay, I can't show that. I can't show most of the stuff that's in this portfolio because it is YouTube. It is highly explicit, but if you know Tim Vigil and you know Faust, then you know what some of the contents of this are. So I got a couple of the portfolios. It looks like all three sets, they are huge. That candle is a dick. Now these people were super sweet. I told you I was super honest with them about what I do and, and the stuff I collect and the stuff I buy and how some of the stuff I'm just getting because I know the name. I don't know if some of this stuff's like super valuable or it's just like 20 and 30 bucks. They had, there was a couple of original pages of art. Most of it was this artist named Bertram. I don't know who he is, but I snagged this uh, original commission of Conan and that looks like Red Sonia down there. And there was this original page. I recognize the name. It's signed right here by Joe Vigil. This is from the comic Dog. This is issue number two, I believe. From right up here, it says Dog to $75. And Dog was a, a three-part book that he did. And I'm going to have to find it. I didn't actually see it in the collection. But that's pretty cool. They gave it to me after I bought all this stuff. So the last thing that I want to show was packaged together. And I just saw this. The Independent Comic Book Sampler. Now, some of the names on here on the front cover that I could recognize just by the last name is Shelton, maybe Gilbert Shelton. But up here, we've got Eastman, Kevin Eastman, Del Keown, I'm assuming, Ted McKeever, I'm assuming. I get home and I take this out and I realize it's two books. And you look at the second book and look what's on the front cover. The Turtles. Don't really need to look at anything else on this cover. The names are inconsequential to me because it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But I did a little eBay search when I got home when I saw this. And I'm like, oh shit. The last time a pair of these sold went for $250. I flipped through it very quickly. There's some Harvey P car in here. And I'm so interested to see what these are. I might go back there. Uh, I, I told them to message me if they found anything else. I also told them to message me if they needed some help trying to figure out how to sell this or if they had any questions it was very nice to meet these people I, like i said i was there for almost three hours just chatting thanks for watching don't forget every wednesday west coast wednesday eve my comic book claim sale and auction every sunday i'd love for you to tune in a sunday sit down where we just kind of go through books and talk about comics at a deeper level i appreciate everybody liking subscribing following all that stuff check me out on instagram all the links down below i'll see you soon <laughs> to have that. Yeah, 
Sis.